Well, thanks. Uh, this is a great opportunity to speak to an Asia savvy audience, uh, so we can speak in a little bit of shorthand here. Um, nearly my whole career has ended up being connected to Asia, and um, right now, for the first time, I will reveal Via's complicity in that plot. <laughs> Uh, before coming to, uh, to Stanford as an undergraduate, uh, I didn't know much about Asia. I came from Colorado, which was more provincial then than it is now. Uh, but the Vietnam War protests on campus got me interested in Asia. And, um, and when the secret bombing of Cambodia became public in early 70, 1973, for some unknowable reason, I was drawn to learn even more about Asia. Uh, in the spring of 1973, I was walking across White Plaza on campus and I picked up a leaflet. It, it might have even been upside down, I'm not sure. Uh, in my memory, it was upside down, but I picked it up and it was touting VIA. And, and uh, I thought, you know, getting, this may be a great way to get to know Asia. John Ambler Volunteer sounded a lot better to me than Private First Class Ambler. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in, Indonesia piqued my interest and, um, and I, I got so hooked that I, and so, uh, determined to go to Indonesia that I made the decision in that summer that I was going to start studying Indonesian even as an undergraduate. And I did, uh, I did take six classes through, through my senior year. And uh, after graduating, I went to West Sumatra for a year and then for a year in Bali. Um, I loved it. I hated it. I loved it. I hated it. Uh, I was probably pretty, pretty uh, much like a lot of bipolar via student, via uh, volunteers. Um, so the next thing I know, more than 20 years have passed, and I've spent eight years in Indonesia, five years in India, five years in Thailand, three years in Vietnam, and my four kids have grown up in Asia. Um, my, uh, uh, I don't know, somehow Asia's got this kinetic force that uh, defies normal laws of physics. Um, the gravitational attraction alone can't explain why I've been so drawn to Asia. Um, after VIA, I had a lot of different incarnations or avatars. Um, I, uh, I was a graduate student. I was a researcher. I was an NGO worker, uh, grant maker, foundation representative, Asia regional director, and now vice president. Uh, my current brief is worldwide, but Asia still figures prominently. So what did I do all those years while I was in Asia? Well, a lot of things, actually. Um, worked on expanding farmer rights building relations between the USA and Vietnam, negotiating with the Taliban for girls' education, uh, expanding humanitarian access to northern Sri Lanka during a civil war, directing relief and recovery efforts after, after the tsunami, combating gender-based violence, promoting women's savings groups, and the list goes on. Um, that array of things might sound a bit scattered, but a common thread throughout it all has been fighting for, uh, for the rights of people who uh, are otherwise suffering in, pover uh, in poverty and injustice. And by unpacking the mechanisms uh, that entrench poverty and by supporting new partnerships and, and amplifying voices, uh, I think uh, we've got, uh, got some new hope that we can actually make a dent in poverty and injustice. So what did VIA do for me specifically? Uh, well, they didn't, VIA didn't teach me how to bargain with the Taliban. Uh, or give me insights into how to increase rice yields in Asia. Um, w you know, whatever I, skills I have in those areas really were acquired through graduate school and work experience. Uh, but VIA was instrumental in shaping my underlying philosophy uh, toward life. Um, VIA introduced me to poverty and in indirectly, subtly conveyed a message that optimism uh, was warranted in, in the fight against poverty and injustice. Um, as a VIA volunteer, I lived in a fishing village in West Sumatra, and I commuted every day in to teach English at, the, at Andalus University to professors who were, needed their English to be able to take advantage of World Bank scholarships abroad. And so every day I'm faced with this contradiction between dirt poor fishers and, and university professors, and it got me interested in knowing more about the underlying structures and mechanisms of poverty, not just its physical appearance. VIA also gave me a personal tutorial in poverty studies. VIA's stipend of $62.50 a month, <laughs> it technically kept me above the poverty line. Not much above the poverty line, but technically above the poverty line. And uh, by the way, Dwight, after I had spent m my money for the room and board, I had $25 a month left for everything else. Uh, it's still not too late to give me that cost of living adjustment. <laughs> My, uh, my two years uh, with VIA taught me how to combine patience with persistence. 
For example, I learned not to get upset when in 1976 I found out that for a foreigner to get married in a civil ceremony in Singaraja, Bali with another foreigner, there were 30 different documents needed. <laughs> that was good training for me a decade later when I needed 27 signatures to get my computer out of customs when I was starting my dissertation research. Uh, Via taught me that the shortest distance between two points, between point A and point B, is not a straight line. It's a zigzag line that goes to point C, point D, various other diversions, and all for good reason, because sometimes the longer the route, the more time you have to build consensus, and, and the greater the, the agreement and, and solidity of the solution that, that ensues is. Um, Via taught me a lot about building in that kind of lenient schedule when you want to get important things done. My VIA experience also raised my tolerance for ambiguity and encouraged a willingness to enter what might be called the in-between zone. Not the twilight zone, but close. Um, the in-between zone is that embattled terrain where rapid change meets slower, slower change, where upland cultures meet lowland cultures, where center, uh, center systems meet peripheral areas, uh, where local, insight, local rights clash with state rights, where rural meets urban, where insular meets cosmopolitan, where the economics of Asia and America begin to mirror each other, and where one set of core values collides with other sets of equally valid core values. I've noticed that VIA volunteers generally thrive in the ambiguity of cons the contested space of in-between land. My VIA experience also taught me how to see the world through local eyes. At both VIA postings, I lived with a family. Exposure to the te what they call tetek bengek the small little things, the vicissitudes, irritants, challenges of daily life. They gave me glimpses into um, the rhythms of private life. Travelers and professionals who just form those opinions from behind the glass of their cars or from watching television, I think, are really at a disadvantage. Um, and living with families helped me see that every society has both inner and outer cultures. The inner culture, one focuses around food, guests, children, and shelter. The outer one is the, is the presence uh, exhibited in public spaces on the street and in, in the way people drive cars. Um, I mean, you would be amazed that Thai, Thai culture is so orderly and, and sympathetic in the inner culture and the inner circle. And then the way they drive cars where they think they're, they're free of that culture is, uh, is a different Thai person at all. Um, if you don't, if you, knowing one of those domains, the inner culture, and not knowing the outer culture or vice versa, that's only half an education. I was encouraged by VIA support for my language studies. By the way, those of you who know me here think, may think of me as an Indonesianist, but actually I also studied Hindi, Burmese, and Vietnamese along the way. Um, language is the window to the soul and idioms are the diamonds. Take for example the phrase sipatanak nasi. Literally it means to cook a pot of rice. That takes about 20 minutes. But it's not a measure of time, it's a measure of distance. It's a measure of how far one can walk in 20 minutes. You don't get those types of things from watching TV. My VIA experience also taught me something about major belief systems, starting in my VIA days with the Islamic and Hindu traditions. Eventually, I would learn something about Buddhism and Confucianism, too. I'm happy to report that the beliefs of many people across the world are actually closer than you think they are. Um, as for me, I've selectively and self-servingly appropriated concepts from different religions in support of my own individual syncretic worldview. Perhaps that makes me a confusionist, <laughs> but I'm not gonna blame VIA for that. One more lesson from the VIA days, the importance of being honest, earnest, humble, and respectful. Dwight Clark has always been my role model in that regard, and I know he will disapprove of me using this analogy, but in Buddhist terms, I think of Dwight as a bodhisattva a being that has the opportunity to enter nirvana, but instead, because of his great compassion, stays on earth to help us poor, miserable souls con <laughs> con contend, contend with the wheel of life. <laughs> Any anyway, uh, anyway, more than once, Dwight's values have kept me from getting too far off the track. So that's the teaser for the true story of how a simple boy from Colorado got mixed up with a complex continent like Asia. You're free to submit uh, sealed bids for the movie rights by up to midnight tonight. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Dwight. Thanks to all of you in Asia, in, in VIA. Terima kasih, Danya Bhatt, Emyaji Chezutimbade, Akun Charan, Kopkun Makap, Shisei. 
and every other way that Asians have figured out to say via rocks. 